Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to Russell Rock with Rick Connor. What the F was that entire freaking promo about? Mark Kalbacher. She's like the James Ellsworth of women. And Corey Castle. I look like Paul London and Brian Kendrick mixed. <laughs> Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome to another episode of Rassle Rock. Thank you guys very much for playing along. I don't have my soundboard anymore, so nobody can hear these music but me, but we can I think everybody it, knows just we a way. Rick, you need can you hear very, it a little bit? Yeah. Rick, you need a very expensive trip to Best Buy. I know. <laughs> I had one to get this this insane mic that's, you know, still not nearly <laughs> as good as the mic I used to have. I'm jealous of that mic. If you know how to play with it, man, that's a good mic. I'm fiddling with it, yeah. I'm, I'm a fiddling with it. Gotta get the blues. Gotta get the Yeah. This thing's more powerful. Uh, this thing has weight to it. I could I could crush a zombie head with this. It's <laughs> magnets in them. This is an yeah. apocalyptic weapon. <laughs> well, today, for those watching the video, have already seen, but we have a very special guest here. Please welcome everybody to the show, Hannah Harkness. Thank you guys Hi. very much for joining us. Yeah, hey, absolutely. how you doing? Up, I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Uh, excited Excellent. to be here, albeit abruptly. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, kind of a uh, kind of came out of nowhere. <laughs> it was about an hour and a half. Totally ago. cool. Yeah, it was about. <laughs> I think it was considerably less actually. But don't worry about it. I'm so happy. To be, I was just that was what I just texted Corey. Is I'm just I'm sitting here paralyzed by indecision right now. I'm just high, and I think I have an hour until the next thing. And I'm like, yeah, podcast, fun, great. Let's do this. No more wall staring. Yeah, sounds good. <laughs> sounds pretty awesome. Um, Corey tells me you have a bit of a in ring experience as well. Uh, there's something called awful wrestling. Can you tell us about that? Yeah. So uh, once upon a time in pre-pandemic Philadelphia, some performance artists uh, decided they wanted to do a comp. They wanted to put together like a comedy wrestling uh, promotion, like an indie comedy wrestling promotion. But they are not like wrestlers they're performance artists so they really wanted to like lean into the theater side of it and they had to like the end they wanted it to be like kind of bad on purpose uh so they started awful wrestling which is uh the acronyms uh uh what is it art wrestling federation urban league awful uh <laughs> it's, it's fucking wild yeah so they get this thing going and it was like it started as like mostly performance artists that were able to just like kind of figure out how to do wrestling moves or how to but it's supposed to be bad on purpose anyway um but then inevitably because it was funny and you're dealing in philadelphia uh eventually it's wrestling Philly stand-up comedians are going to hear about it. That's like a demographic, it's a wrestling fan-heavy demographic of people. So a lot of Philly stand-ups just started wrestling in this comedy federation. So then you had just like half Philly stand-up comedians, half performance artists with like kind of a smattering of wrestling training doing this thing and it just took off they were just selling out <laughs> Philomoka uh, right. and it, it was just it's mind-blowing as somebody that goes to other indie wrestling promotions because it's just like they didn't even have to like try and suddenly they filled the room with non-wrestling fans because it was being marketed as performance art and comedy and then eventually uh like i think Ophidian is still like did a match at an awful wrestling show at one mm. point or now eat it surreal um but uh yeah, Ophidian did, like, a balcony spot, and, like, people lost their minds, because they're not wrestling fans, they don't even, they're, like, they don't even have any comprehension that this happens ever, and then they see a fucking Cobra wrestler jump off a balcony onto a uh, art wrestler, that's, like, it, it, like, they just kept showing up for that, and we all just kind of get kept getting to get, like, free control. But um, I wasn't originally in Awful. Like, they'd had a couple shows, and they had actually been talking to me about because they knew I had a martial arts background and I was a wrestling fan. Um, so I was, like, I'm kind of adjusting to moving to New York right now, but, uh, like, eventually I'll be back. And then finally I was like, all right, I've had... Um, so my, my wrestling character is uh, Junkyard Cat, ring name rather um <laughs> but uh i uh yeah um i ages ago before i was even thinking about wrestling at all just as a passing thought when i saw the, the always sunny episode where they get the indestructible cat 
Um, they're just, like, going to the junkyard to try to get the junkyard dog, and they're just like, no, but we have this cat that was, like, born in a pool of gasoline. And, like, at, <laughs> when I saw that, I remember just having the fleeting thought, like, that would be a really funny wrestling character. Just, like, an indestructible feral cat that just does a bunch of spots with, like, trash cans and just, like, getting lit on fire and shit and nothing happens. And, like possibly like like eating drugs off the ground and shit so i developed well, if, it, if it's performance yeah. art you can yeah. you can get away with all those you can gimmicks. get away with you can put all anything. those gimmicks all yeah. in there yeah because it's it is not a, because that promotion is so weird and it's not a wrestling it's not feeded by a wrestling school it has no connection to the wrestling scene at all whatsoever they just want you to show up with some strange shit um, I just walk in, I'm like, all right, I'm just going to pitch you something completely batshit crazy. I'm doing an Ultimate Warrior ripoff, but it's an indestructible feral cat. I have a mask. This whole thing is going to be a, like a story about gentrification and how I'm guarding my junkyard. Like, I, I'm just like, you know what? Nobody else is ever going to give me the chance to do this unhinged bullshit. It's... So please let me use your ring. Um, and <laughs> it's completely fucking. And that, it's not just me. Like awful wrestling. Also, uh, Ryan Shader's a Philly stand-up. Uh, yeah, he, 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 he was on my <laughs> podcast. He told the whole. Yeah. He told everything about the on my on the episode of my podcast with Shader. Yeah. He just talked about the whole thing. So. Yeah. The the. the bad, if you yeah, want to hear the most miserable conversation I've ever had on my podcast, check out the episode <laughs> with Ryan Shader. That's that's oh, Ryan. That's, that's definitely yeah, Ryan. Yeah, no, he definitely has. I, I I've worked done, in the industry. I've done stand up for a long time. He has this face for sure. Yeah, yeah I've worked in the industry. Really with him. He's great guy. In the industry. Yeah. 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 Um, he's, a, but he's a bar guy. Basically, like, so when I I'm in so when I'm in New York, like, just trying to figure out, like, okay, I'm gonna go do this. Um, I had hired a friend of a friend to install a heavy bag in my house at one point, and found out that he was a pro wrestler, and he also had a cat gimmick. It's just like the weirdest, like, overly specific synchronicity ever. But I was like, hey, if you could like train me in some stuff because I'm trying to do this thing, and you know, like, I could bullshit it because like. I'm a black belt taekwondo, like, I'm not, like, completely out of the loop on combat stuff, but I'm also not a fucking wrestler. Um, so, there's a place up in the Bronx that lets you use the ring if you sign a, a Doom Waiver. Uh, it's, like, $10, uh, but you have to sign, like, a Doom Waiver in the is ring. Is it uh, No, it's a BWF, Bronx Wrestling Federation. No, but, I mean, is the wrestler that you met, is it Black Zemis? No, no, does... Zach, Zach Bruno, he oh. uh, he refed as Zach Snow. He still does ref as Zach Snow sometimes. I don't know. Okay, um, okay. well, I know, yeah. I know, I know. Black Zemis has like mm -hmm. a cat. He's like a cat gimmick, and he works yeah. out at that gym. Mm -hmm. Alley Cat no longer. It was weird because people keep trying to feud me, or they were trying to feud me with Alley Cat all the time, even though I'm not really a real wrestler. I've had three matches, um, two with Awful and one in Brooklyn Battle Comedy, the, the bullshit I'm doing up here with Junkyard Cat. Um, but, like, Alley Cat's, like, a real wrestler, and people kept trying to view me against her on Twitter, and I'm like, please stop. No! <laughs> this is so fucking embarrassing. Don't please at stop. me, bro. Yeah, don't, don't at don't at me. Or better, just don't at me and the fucking actual cat wrestler and not the fucking bullshit comedian 33-year-old just having a nervous breakdown. Like, <laughs> don't do that. Um... <laughs> But yeah, but she actually just turned heel this weekend, and she's a shooter and wiped off the whiskers and shit. She's Alley Cash now, so now this is no longer uh, this is no longer a full blown irrational anxiety in my head. Sell out. Um, what a sell out. What? Why, nah. Why Alley Cash? <laughs> so, yo, so she sliced War Horse's head though. That was it was awesome. Like it, it was yeah, a really was just, good turn. I was just playing along. I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> So now, so now you see you. Uh, I'm hearing you have uh, starting in June. You have your own series on uh, IWTV. Is this correct? On uh, internet that wrestling television. That is correct, and it is the, it is definitely the series of the group. Uh, I wrote the screenplay and I'm acting in it, but the story was developed as a group. Um, the Brooklyn Battle Comedy started up here uh, with me and some other comedians that also started training with me when I started going up to the Bronx. And, like, they had a stand-up show already, and then some random person who came to the show was like, yo, I'll come back if uh, you guys do a death match in the basement. And they were like, okay, we don't give a shit. This is some, like, place, it's like a gay bar in Prospect Park. Um, 
and they did it. They actually did, like, a fucking death match in the basement. That person, though, didn't show up, which is really fucking funny. Um, but, like, they did the whole death match in the basement, and then they just started running a no-ring show in the basement of this stand-up show. Um, and we were, uh, and that was the other time that I wrestled as Junkyard Cat outside all holes on a proper battle comedy show. Um, but then the pandemic hit, uh, even though we had all these live shows planned coming up, I was actually supposed to wrestle Pinky Sanchez on, like, three days' notice, and I was freaking out, and then the pandemic canceled the show. Just, like, weird. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, fucking weird shit. Um, but Thanks, I, pandemic. Uh, yeah, I, <laughs> but anyway, um, then we just started playing D&D against each other because it was locked down, and we were all going crazy. And then, just based on riffing off each other and shit, uh, Benel, the main producer guy, uh, he was like, we should just write and produce a movie, fuck it, um, and just do it based on, like, some of the shit we've been riffing about. And Benel said that he wanted it to be a mockumentary about making the greatest pandemic cinematic wrestling match of all time. Um, or at least in the last six months. Uh, so <laughs> it turned six months time. <laughs> in the whole six months. In the whole six months. Um, so we just did a bunch of shit in a shared Google Drive document, brainstorming, and then I just I kicked it until a screenplay came out, uh, and then we shot it uh, in mostly in one bar in Queens, and then we gorilla shot the, the cinematic wrestling match. It's like the chicken fight. It is. It takes place in entire, like in Family Guy. Like it takes place in entirely too many places in New York. Uh, oh, I thought you were it, talking about up on people's shoulders. No, 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 no not like that. Not like that. No. Um, but no, I, that's what I was about. That's why I had to clarify. I was like, it's like the chicken yeah. fight in Family Guy, not like the chicken fight in like that. In that's pool? not. That's not wrestling. But we should start a chicken. It, it, Brooklyn Battle Comedy is planning to do a bunch of like incredibly stupid shit, just kind of so, in the spirit of awful so wrestling. Let's so let's gimmick it up. Gimmick it up. Uh, chicken fight. Chicken fight matches. Yeah, chicken like fight a, matches. Uh, like like kind of like the they Nigerian can join the drum arm fight. wrestling. Yeah, like the the arm wrestling fed that they have. Uh, did you were you at the last awful show where they the arm wrestling fed came up from Baltimore? I've never been to one. I only know oh about you didn't. It. Go, I only know oh about man, it. I know about it through Dorian. Dorian told me about it. Oh and then, yeah, and Lemare, and then mm-hmm. yeah, Lemare was in it. Lasagna yeah. Club was dope. Him and Brandon Gorin had the tag team Lasagna Club. So awesome. I only knew about it through Lemare and, and Dorian, and then mm-hmm. and then Shaner told me more about it when he was on the show. So I'm I'm very. Um, I'll send you the video of my second match. The oh, first you sent match. It, you sent it to me already. Oh, I did. Okay. I've seen it. Jeez. I don't need to see it again. Once is enough. <laughs> All right. <laughs> It is that good, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's such bullshit. My third match is the best one because of the actual real tra- training I had, and also like I had a, like a fucking real wrestler against me, and not a uh, Rob. Um, <laughs> I've, I've I've been in the ring with Pinky Sanchez one time, mm-hmm. one time, and that was like some some like shindy show in Allentown. And it was like nobody saw it, nobody was there. But but I'd I'd like to have the opportunity to do that again at some point. I'm gonna see him this weekend. I'm going to Polyam Cult Party Three oh, in yeah. Pittsburgh, the world famous, nationally trending uh, Pittsburgh trap house show. We're all it's very a, proud of Envy Young. It's a <laughs> uh, what's the, Envy Young? Envy Young yep. show. Envy okay. Young. Yep. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, I'm familiar. I I used to work at Envy in Capital. Back oh back. yeah cool cool very cool <laughs> um well that's awesome you were talking about um uh, earlier off before we before we started recording that you're mostly uh an aew fan not so much wwe mm-hmm. um, yeah i mean but it is more of a time constraint thing than any anything just because i i mean i like nxt and for a while i was actually following nxt uk which is like a side quest uh, honestly, yeah. but I, it is really good, and I like that it usually takes place in a tent in a field somewhere. Uh, I it just, <laughs> but it's like <laughs> performance center quality wrestling. But like all the dudes like just like came out of a bar or some shit. So like I don't hate WWE. I just like there's too much wrestling, and I'm also at the point where I want to watch all my friends wrestle. Like I'm still catching up mm-hmm. on shows with the collective. Like, gotcha. Mm-hmm. Well, 
I mean, I mean, it's it almost seems like it's impossible to live a life and do other things besides watch wrestling with how many oh, yeah. hours of wrestling content. Yeah, no, there, it's there's too the much wrestling. There's yeah, I, I, yeah, I kind of tapped out this week. Like, I'm probably going to be useless once we start talking wrestling. <laughs> after after <laughs> Raw Hall of Fame, two nights of NXT. <laughs> SmackDown, yeah. two nights of WrestleMania, yeah. Raw, and then NXT again. I, I, I like yeah. how we had a lethal disease, and then it was just permanently two nights of WrestleMania. Like, they did that the first year because everything was fucked up and weird, and then they just doubled down. The fucking- Are they going to do that every <gasps> year now? Every, every year. Oh, every of course year. they will because they'll sell all the fucking tickets and all the money. Like, no. Oh. <laughs> well, do you, think it, do you think it's like a, like a ticket package you can buy both nights at once? I have no idea. Or you can buy. Well, you know, maybe we should have a wrestling podcast where we talk about stuff like this. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a great idea, Corey. Uh, from uh, from what I heard, it was a, uh, a a double package. I don't know if you had to buy both nights of Mania, but it was like six hundred hours to go to both shows. No, you could you could go to individual shows. It's you just could. like. Okay. It's like, how do you do that unless you know which individual show you want to go to? Right, and right. That, that, that's a problem. You could, you could spend $600 for tickets and then go to the half that all the wrestlers you didn't want to watch were on. <laughs> you could, you could be like, oh, oh just, my God. That, yeah, that's messed up. <laughs> I hadn't even thought about that. Like, <laughs> I, I, I purchased a ticket to night one or to night two, and I watched night one on TV, and I was like, ah, I should have got both nights. Ah. Yeah, imagine that, like, you, go, you go to night one, and like for me, all I wanted to see was Lashley versus Drew, and that was the first match. It's yeah, like, yeah, that's 600 bucks down the drain, and you see, <laughs> you monetized. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that Monday morning, I wanted to, I had the fucking worst hangover because my brain is programmed for WrestleMania. We're drunk. We're very drunk. And then it did it twice. And I just got, I'm mm. like, I hate this. This is, this hangover's Vince McMahon's fault. It is. Like, I can't, you can't expect me to not get drunk during the, this amount of wrestling. It's just because yeah. it's if fucking you got to blame somebody, sure. If you gotta blame surely, somebody. And I surely can't somebody it, else besides but, yourself. Absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, no. Vince McMahon's a great person to blame for shit, you know? Even if it's, like, the wrong thing, it just it's like a monster getting hit for tax evasion. Who cares? Just fuck him. <laughs> whatever you can, whatever you can get him for. Whatever you can get him for. Doesn't matter. If you can get him in jail, it doesn't matter. As long as he stays there a long time. Yep. Cook yep. the books, yeah. And there's a lot to blame him for this week. Like, he's not the most popular oh, yeah. person uh, I don't know if you guys heard they they dropped and right before I think it was You're like two days before. <laughs> what the, well, I missed? No, I'm, just I'm just taking shots of Shaner. I doubt he even knew that I'm on the show with you, Corey. <laughs> yeah, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you tap room on 19th, Shaner. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know Shaner, so it's a lot. It's a very cool hangout with uh, great mini security there. He's a, oh, okay. He's a great stand-up comedian, a great wrestler, and his his art is just disturbing, uh, but they're also very great. <laughs> but fucking disturbing. His art is that just you look at his mind when you see his drawings and go, oh fuck. But it's great. that's a compliment. Well, well, when this. when we started to do the podcast, like the audio wasn't working. And he took his headphones off and he threw them across the room. And he's like, this is the last time I'll do a virtual podcast. I'm done with it. <laughs> oh, my God. Yo. I, I think that made I, it on the episode. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he said on his podcast for a while he was carrying around a mini cleaver instead of, like, a regular night. Like, it was just, like, a little, little meat cleaver. Okay. <laughs> Dear Lord. Yeah, the wrestling business is full of them, so good luck. <laughs> Oh yeah, uh, no, for sure. I've I've definitely kind of wandered into a weird corner that's like the the inner the crossroads between drag and wrestling and like mm-hmm. this other drag stuff. Dragon wrestling, talk- yeah. Dragon, no drag and. I know, <laughs> I, know I know, I'm cracking. I, I was like, yep, no, that's what's. Where can I get tickets for dragon wrestling? Dragon wrestling, man. Brooklyn <laughs> Battle Comedy can do dragon. Yo, how dope would it be to get two people to do those like fifty person Chinese uh, New Year dragon puppets <laughs> to wrestle? That's insane. It's Human awesome. centipede wrestling. Yeah, if you can, <laughs> oh, if you can man. call a spot with that, go for it. No. That's the I name of the episode. I bet it could be done. Yeah. Definitely. 
<laughs> we can work away. We can we can figure anything out. It's, and don't let Vince McMahon get a hold of the idea because he'll ruin it. But he'll definitely do it first and say it was his idea. <laughs> Chicken fights and human centipede no. wrestling. Chicken you know what? <laughs> double up. <laughs> speaking of dragon. promotions, speaking of promotions taking your ideas, I can't confirm this in any way, but I posted a week before it happened on the WrestleSplania account that I thought it would be really funny if Maki Ito came in and just did not stop doing her music the entire time, like it was New Jack's music. I tweeted mm. that, and then it happened on AEW, and I'm like, that's and AEW follows our Twitter account, and I was like, that is so specific. Did you guys like <laughs> that is. Like, <laughs> that is Bastards! <laughs> those ba- well, not those bastards, because that means they're listening to the fans and they're giving us what they want, even if it's just me and shit posting. <laughs> they seem to care. <laughs> just can you can you start saying like really ridiculous stuff and see if they start doing it? I yeah. have been ever since that happened. <laughs> I don't know what else I've. No, I'm sure I've also just requested a lot of other bullshit. Like they got uh, this group Twitter account that I'm on, like the WrestleMania Twitter account. Is where all of my feelings go. I just shit post wrestling under the cloak of anonymity of five other people being on that account, and it's great. And AEW follows it. <laughs> Who's the list, Rick, of all the releases that WWE did this week? Oh, sure. Well, this uh, it feels like we got lucky because there was only ten. Uh, <laughs> as, opposed to, only as opposed to last year, only ten. As opposed to last year, that was uh, what forty-eight. I think it was. And, that's, last and year, then like was that? And is that total like the back office too, and not just the workers or like uh, <laughs> a lot of the, the person that wrote the Otis Mandy romance storyline got let go. Yeah, it wasn't the was like, fucked up. That was so. Because like, it wasn't the second or third biggest storyline going into Mania. Like, yeah. really, the guy yeah. that actually wrote an interesting story got fired. Like, <laughs> what, what is going on in WWE? It's like, oh, you're like talented. Want to lose. <laughs> <laughs> Unless it's NXT. I have that's that's when, you know, I'm not willing to fully shoot on WWE because I've never watched NXT and been upset that I watched it. I can't say that about the rest of the product. But I've never <laughs> just watched NXT and been like, "What did I just do with these hours of my life?" Like wow, somebody, I'm doing it right now. yeah. Every time Karrion Cross shows up on television with a belt, <laughs> <laughs> how do you beat Finn Balor? Uh, <laughs> Seriously, it was a good match, though. It was, it was a good match. You gotta yeah. say it was a good match. It's on NXT. It was good, the hell of it. Good wrestling. I think he's kind of sluggish, man. He looks like he's like lumbering in a ring sometimes when he's wrestling, and it just I don't know. It kind of annoys me when he's wrestling. And his chip is just too much for me. He's like too big. <laughs> it's, yeah, too big. He like he doesn't know what to do with his size. That's it's it's just a little awkward that he's just like, Whoop, I just got this big. I was not this big before. Yeah. Like, he it feels like it feels like he hit a big. growth spurt. Right. Like it, exactly. at some point in the in the recent in the recent past, he hit a growth spurt and he, he used to wrestle as a cruiserweight and now he, he doesn't know what he to went, do. He went to a Zoltar machine. <laughs> <laughs> he wished to be big. <laughs> that was it. That was all he did. Yeah, I, no, he's big. But the rest of NXT is not bad. I think they, I think they need to calm down. Like they, they hit a good point with uh, Johnny Gargano. How funny it was, mm-hmm. and now they're overdoing it. And I think they need to dial it back just a little bit. Mm-hmm. But uh, we, if we want to go there, uh, Kushida winning cruiserweight title. I was super happy about that. Was it yeah. weird seeing yeah. him in gear and not jeans? Like, yeah, yeah. used to the jeans. What happened to the jeans? I, I guess they're that trying to market strange. him again for yeah. um, maybe you know the cruiserweight uh, the two hundred five mm-hmm. live that no one watches. They're they're trying to sell underpants. <laughs> yeah, cushy <laughs> underpants. I I wonder if what gets watched less NXT UK or two hundred five live. I'm get, I'm gonna bet it was my my lane NXT UK the, that the re, the literal mud show in Scotland. Um, but well, I think um, I think main event gets more viewers. <laughs> Two I think the bump is doing great right now. The bump, um, the bump. Uh, the bump. I think they actually get more viewers than both. <laughs> the bump. Yeah. With so, the thing you get on so your thing. Bad. It's so it's, bad. Yeah, it's it's not great right now. But um, I don't know. Hey, NXT UK got a a, a title match on on the last takeover, which I was surprised about. It was the and, best um, match. And it's it was the best, best match. match. So yeah, I mean, no, the champion. NXT UK is good. Um, I like it because it's it's good, and it's also like like I've said four times already. It's also because it's like 
fog rolling in over it. Like, it's it's hilarious. And British wrestling fans are just so insane. Like, it's just like that whole cult, like the whole thing where they hold their shoes up when they don't like yeah. somebody. Yeah. I, I love that. <laughs> that fucking cool. <laughs> but then they also, yeah, but like, they, like Walter kind of started his like whole storyline and thing there. And I, that was, that hooked me in enough that I was watching it. It was like that storyline and a, lo- a lot of the women's storylines. Like, and there's all these matches that I feel like just get swept under the rug. Like, the only problem with NXT UK now is Walter and and uh, Pete Dunne are now on NXT. So yeah. all you need, all you need is Tyler Bate and the big three are sitting on NXT, and then you leave NXT UK with pretty much nothing. Yeah, <laughs> I would love Mustache yeah. Mountain. Oh, to come back. the women's roster is still really fucking good, though. Um. Man, I still, uh, a thing that I have not seen enough praise for is that uh, Kaylee Ray and Tony Storm did an I Quit match that was fucking crazy. And, like, I feel like it was a hallucination I had sometimes. It's just like, it was <laughs> really fucking crazy. And then Piper Niven, like, came and, like, stopped it and shit. It was like, like but I don't know. I mean, one of the best. Weird Hills is- to Die On. <laughs> I mean, it's not, bad. It's not a bad show at all. Like, we no. saw no. the. Um- the, the dragon. Yeah, I'm off yelling and, uh... like you're fighting me about it, but you're definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> really, I'm but yelling I mean... at myself. <laughs> <laughs> stop, like the... stop not listening to me! Stop not <laughs> listening to me! You're like, no, we get it. It's fine. We get it. It's like, what, the fuck, bitch? <laughs> what, is it? what is it, Frisky Dingo? I got ideas. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my goodness! Um, I'm glad they didn't uh, touch any of uh, NXT with any of the the firings that happened. Uh, well, the... there was a rumor that that was supposed to happen, and it didn't. That that was really? like then it just like it. I thought it was going to be like like yesterday. The rumors that were, were that it was supposed to be yesterday. So I was in the morning going like, uh, all right, wait, well, no, maybe it was it, maybe it was Friday, and I was like, ah, well, let's just wait till end of closing business day. And see if that happens. Like in the morning, I was like, ah, it's going to happen tonight at some point. And then it never happened. So <laughs> it turns out to be. My biggest problem about the releases, and uh, I know it's been spoken about a lot, but I, I mean, I, I immediately thought about it when I saw it too is Tucker, Wesley Blake, uh, the Iconics. Bo Dallas. Bo, I, did, I didn't even know Bo, he was still. I'm not talking Bo, but I'm saying, oh, well, kind of. But they got rid of uh, Kurt Hennings' kid before they got rid of Bo, like last year. Um, they break the tag teams up, like they yeah. they broke up heavy machinery, and then Tucker goes in the limbo. He gets let go. Wesley Blake, his boy, gets him in trouble. They they put him on the shelf, and then he gets fired. Wesley Blake's pretty talented. That was, that kind of sucked. The Iconics they broke them up because they want to push Peyton Royce. Never pushed her, and then they they throw both of them out. And then the other the other two just got bad like raw deals. Like Chelsea Green, she got hurt. She came back. Someone threw her sloppily out of the ring, and she broke her wrist. And then she gets thrown out. Yeah, she's she very injury out. prone. Yeah. It just stinks because I think she would have been a really big name if they got gave her a chance. I wish they'd use Jake Atlas more. That bothers me on the regular. But he shouldn't be jobbing. I, I really think he should get a push. I love him because he's beige curtains. That's why. He's, he's, he's there's nothing curtains. special about him. He's just he's some good. dude. He's good. Yeah. He's, he's really good. good. But like, I, I don't know. He, I right. think. He's talented, but he's hard for yeah. people to connect with. He doesn't have anything special about him. Mm. Yeah, that's, what, that's all it is. He's, he's a really talented guy. But uh, yeah, think, every, time he, every time he's on the screen, I want to go to sleep. Like, <laughs> I mean, it's it's yeah, and, and if, if if it was talent that they they were getting let go for, that'd be one thing. But it's mm-hmm. they, they it's also kind of right. Yeah, cuts. they let go of Samoa Joe, so it's obviously yeah funny. yeah. And now they're, they're just claiming, it's like, oh, it's budget cuts. We have to cut budgets. Well, they just released that Vince McMahon made $4 million last year alone. Mm-hmm. And they're, they're, they're announcing, like, record profits for 2020 As after CEO. they just released a whole bunch of people. Yeah. yeah. All right, he's the WWE cool. theme, by the way, because his WWE entrance music slapped. That was a good, that was a good thing, and now it's gone. <laughs> oh, man, I just... Yeah. I oh I just tweeted about that and I, somebody said something and I responded to a tweet and I said that his WWE theme sounded like it was from an Arby's commercial. Du, 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 du. Right, Samoa Joe, we have the meats. His, his music was always supposed to um, be an homage to Godzilla. Yeah, 
It was always oh. supposed to sound like God's all theme music. Oh, I didn't know that. His old TNA music sounded like a God, more like the God's all theme than the WWE version. But that's what it was supposed to be about. Yeah, it made me think of the the Chappelle show, Chappelle show sketch when he was beating up Godzilla. That's yeah, yeah. Music. But uh, whatever happens, out of all of them, Joe's going to land somewhere. He's going to make people a lot of money. And even if he can't wrestle, if he just sits on the mic behind a, behind a table somewhere, he's going to kill it. He's going to absolutely kill it. Of course, yeah. He, he's the only one when they let him go besides being absolutely shocked. I knew nothing bad is going to happen to Joe. No. no, he's going to be great. He might even be better. Some people have been better. Not everybody, but I'm just going to miss him on up, 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 down, down. He's the best. <laughs> Billy Head Rocker is the best. Yeah, and I'm going to miss the trash <laughs> talk on up, up, down, down. Uh, him winning Tetris is still one of the funniest things I've ever seen any wrestler do. It was just <laughs> freaking out. It's like hey, he, it's a great day to play Tetris, isn't it? Just Samoa Joe losing his mind playing Tetris. Dude, when he talks about the power game, when he just starts yelling about the power <laughs> game, and I'm like, I love him, man. He's the best trash talker no matter what's going on mm. in the business. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to miss him because I really think it just sucks. He had that foot injury right when he was getting hot in WWE when he ran after he wrestled uh, – uh, Brock Lesnar, and he was getting really hot. He had that foot injury, never made it to Mania. Then he had a couple of injuries that never made him to the other Manias. And then he saves Mania, standing out in the yeah. pouring rain, <laughs> and like the commentary, too. and like basically he does a you know soft shoe like like I got to see Nick Burke do when you guys were wrestling. Yeah, up in <laughs> time, and Nick went out there and ate his balls to save yeah. that show. <laughs> like you, like you see how invaluable someone like Joe is, and they still just went meh. It's, yeah, it, it, it's it's mind boggling sometimes. Yeah, none of it makes uh, a lick of sense, and he's like you this said, this is Mark, clearly he's gonna... sundowning. <laughs> He's just like make and make. He has tyrannical control, but he's also just checking in and out, and does it's just <laughs> doesn't make for good storytelling. No. No. Um, and where, wherever Joe lands, he's definitely going to do well. He could even be an agent somewhere backstage. Yeah. Uh, it, Impact AEW, wherever. Here's um, a crazy thing, though. Mickey James, Chelsea Green, the Iconics, right? All four of them. What federation desperately needs women wrestlers, right? AEW. AEW. They're all four big names, and two of them are really good workers, and Peyton mm-hmm. Royce is okay. Like, I mean, Billy <laughs> Kate thinks, but she has a massive personality, which really right. helps too. You're looking at four names that go to AEW. They can lift that women's division that stinks. And they need that. Yeah, it's just like, I mean, they have a lot of really good people. They just keep putting them all on YouTube. Like, that's yeah. that's literally the problem. It's not that they're not there. They're just on AEW Dark. Like, if you want to watch good AEW women's wrestling, you have to watch AEW Dark and now AEW Elevation, which is on hidden over on YouTube. And when they had that, like, tournament it was on youtube and like the other streaming services both of the tournament i think the tag What's, tournament was the, like that the too tournament that was like in it was like in a garage or something <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> yeah. exactly so like it's not that AEW has a bad women's division they're just not on dynamite as much the, they're kind the of or was, a lot of them time they're booked badly on dynamite the marketing was so bad for that garage fight thing Yes, it's the no, thing. It, it no, just looks like no, an insult, no. and it just—it seems really weird and passive aggressive. Like I don't even want to get on a pedestal about the women's issues with AEW, just because it's so yeah. multi-layered and confusing. It's not just like yeah. we hate women. It's just like no, we have so many talented women. They're all on YouTube. We have a group for AEW like women fans. It costs fifty dollars. We <laughs> like AEW heels is a fifty dollar membership. Well, here's, here's like, the thing. Here's Fine. the thing, too. Like, I don't know if WWE even understands this. They let Mickey James go. Yeah. Multiple, multiple world champion. Mm-hmm. One of them, probably during the Divas age, next to Molly Holly, was probably the most talented female. Those mm-hmm. two and Gail Kim. Yeah, they she, still works right. she still works right. Like, she can go to AEW and work in a like working training capacity and get mm-hmm. some of these girls up to speed. Oh, hell yeah. And it, that's, that's, a huge, that's a huge mistake, man. I think it's really... A really big mistake to let go of Mickey James. Well, I, I think that's the that's the same thing evidenced by you know Jericho being on Stone Gold's podcast, where it's yeah. like uh, Vince doesn't see AEW as a threat. So letting those those women go doesn't mean that that they're going to go make that product a threat to him. 
like st still not seeing anything as a threat at all yeah. to the empire that is WWE. But then you look, then you look, and after Jericho's podcast, AEW gains two hundred fifty thousand viewers within a week. Mm -hmm. And if because, if they enjoyed the show, that's only going to yeah. get bigger. That's mm -hmm. only going to get bigger. Yeah, because of a commercial that WWE did by putting Jericho on with Stone Cold Steve Austin. <laughs> yeah, they're <laughs> just bad decision makers. That seems to be the reoccurring thing. Is they were like, well, we don't know why they did that. It's because they don't <laughs> make good decisions. It's just it's, it's like. Not it's, it's part of it's a trait of its company. Uh, it's the company slogan or whatever. We make bad decisions. It's it's not even bad decisions. It's complacency. They have so yeah. much money coming in. They have yeah. so much going on that they think that they are invincible to all these smaller federations. Mm -hmm. But what happens when you're on three different networks and you have no one watching? Mm -hmm. You know, sooner or later these networks are going to drop you and you're not going to make the money you're making. And all that is, it's yeah. complacency. They have no competition. They have nothing going on, and they think no one is competition. But they're losing their demographic to anything that'll like show anyone of interest. Like AEW has maybe seven guys that really are interesting. They have a lot of good wrestlers, but on the mic and all, they have they, they only have maybe seven guys that are like interesting. But people are gravitating towards it because it's just not WWE. Dude, you know what's the funniest thing to me this week in wrestling? Uh, the the okay. For sure, uh, the whatever the, the, the big run-in schmaz thing that was going on during the Darby Allen matt Hardy match where mm -hmm. the the butcher came out and he was yeah. like in, in all white and he had this stupid hat. Like, he looked oh, like yeah, the that, they have... Oh, sorry, like, like, <laughs> no, those guys have, like, no, he's worn that before. They have this, like, weird bipolar gear choice thing where, it's, like, a lot of the times they're in leather, but they're also frequently on the side in this, like, Brooklyn bartender weird white... Mm -hmm. shit it's a, like it's, it's a, just it's, but it's a, about half the time and it's real it, confusing it, like, that outfit only make, that outfit only makes sense if they're getting color in the match because it would look it would look awesome wearing the white and then they're just yeah. bleeding everywhere that would look yeah, cool it's like a bar show yeah. do you, rick do you remember when do you remember when um eddie was promoting his gay shows and we went with him to like flyer gay bars in philly yeah that they he looked like somebody who would be at one of those bars yeah like, By the way, actual actual homosexual themed wrestling shows. Not he wasn't being homophobic what? by no. saying, "Hey, Wait, remember those gay shows?" No, no. I mean, yeah, I just watched the Epic Big Day Brunch on the weekend, and I'm about to go to a polyamorous pansexual themed wrestling show in the backyard okay. of Trap House in Pittsburgh. We're good. I understand. No, like, <laughs> I, would, I would go to that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it was it was awesome. It was fantastic. No, it was a, it was it was a lot of fun. It was this was like. 2008 so this is before yeah yeah before, before all these yeah. before gcw yeah before mm -hmm. uh, like uh, mm -hmm. lgbt in uh, was in the community of pro wrestling like mm -hmm. like I'm it sure. is now yeah with the exception of outliers like cassandro and others but, but yeah um I, yeah i could totally see what you're talking about Corey. With, yeah, yeah. <laughs> He definitely looks like one of those people but, um, <laughs> with the with the big mustache too. Yeah, and like the, the old the yeah. mutton chops mustache, or yeah. whatever. What are those called? Fu Manchu. Uh, the yeah. um, handlebar. Is it handlebar mustache? Yeah, handlebar. Yeah. Yeah, something along those lines. Um. Yeah, gosh, what were we talking about before we started talking about mustaches and game hosts? <laughs> did we talk about? Did we? Are we going to talk about WrestleMania? We. I mean, we did a watch along. <laughs> <a lot. laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, <laughs> I'm just mad I missed Nosey on the Nick on the show on during WrestleMania. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dude, um, I, I I'm know, sorry I, I missed the second night. I, that's I, uh, all right. I had some family stuff, but Eddie yeah. Valentine killed it on that show. Yeah, he, he oh yeah, it. definitely. Um, yeah, anybody that wants to go watch that, that's that's definitely worth it. I did I did a like a like a 22 minute clip, uh, like a, a compilation of a highlight mm -hmm. video. Mm -hmm. Of uh, of everything that happened at WrestleMania with our with our watch along, uh, it's definitely worth it just for for Eddie because Eddie Valentine absolutely killed it. He was so uh, doing definitely the, check that out. The shirt, listen, <laughs> yeah, takes his shirt off and is like just the, the, like the I can't do it. I mean, I can't do no. it all the <laughs> but he was doing that a million times all over. Yeah, him. both times as soon as I jumped on because I got on late because I was working at night, he would just start doing the flex as soon as like, <laughs> he's just doing this whole time. I was howling, man. He's like, it was so great. You guys had so much time to prepare. Why are you all wearing shirts? <laughs> <laughs> 
The best was Rick with no shirt on petting the cat, and Rick is blindingly white. (laughs) It's like he's so not (laughs) tan. Hey, it's the middle of COVID. I haven't been tanning. I don't go outside. It's not. (laughs) So let me sit here and pet my cat. I got a nice little kitten that I love very much. It's it's only weird when I'm shirtless. That's all. It's all, that's the only time that it's weird when I'm petting a cat. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, we're not, I don't think we need to go over anything that happened at WrestleMania. We we did ten hours of it live and then a half an hour uh, recap video. So I think we're I think we're okay yeah. when it comes to that. Uh, which you- sucks because WrestleMania I thought was at, what was great, and then you watch Raw and it's just <laughs> kind of goes well, straight downhill. What, what's the guy's name? The new commentator. I don't even know. Uh, he was bad, so I didn't pay attention. Yeah, it, it was He's so- ESPN guy. I just don't know who he is because yeah. nobody watches ESPN anymore. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, I feel bad. As we're like a wrestling news, whatever. I'm gonna on the lights, but looks like I'm just dark here. We should start a wrestling podcast, bro. Yeah, we should. <laughs> Then I'd have to do research and all kinds of stuff. <laughs> yeah, Raw kind of stunk. Uh, NXT picked it up a little bit better. We were talking a little bit about um, you know what NXT wasn't Kushida. that much better. <laughs> These, it was. Or, I thought the we had matches. the match and um, what's his name, Leon Ruff. Wow, yeah. is that guy good? Damn he right. is really good. Yeah. Him and, uh, Swerve had a hell of a match. And like oh, yeah. that, That's I was awesome. bored with the rest of NXT. I don't care about the girls showing up with all their belts. I don't care. <laughs> I think I, I, just, <laughs> I think kind of takes away from Raquel winning the world, you know, the NXT yeah, title. Yeah, it really was like it was kind of robbing her moment. Yeah, it was. Mm-hmm. And I think Raquel out of the three is the best. Like I really like her. I, I think she's got the yeah, best. Yeah, she's awesome. Her. I'm glad that they let her break off from what she was doing with Dakota oh, Yeah, like they, that. She's great. They're like holding up the belts mm-hmm. and they're like, we're best friends in real life. And we're like, we were just feuding for months. We just fought each other. <laughs> that was weird. Yeah. <laughs> so it was like, we're, we're, we're like in this, in this gray fade area where it doesn't matter. Yeah. And, yeah. I hate stuff like that, man. Like, yeah. I don't like uh, breaking cake. I feel like the main primary difference between WWE and AEW is how frequently they break cake. Like AEW basically doesn't acknowledge, like they're self-aware, but WWE, I, like I, I want to watch wrestling where they seem to believe what they're doing. Uh, yeah. That's why I'm watching W. That's why I'm watching NXT. Uh, I think that for me as somebody who has a lot of non-wrestling fan friends and knows how to market to them, it's pretty easy for me to get other people to watch AEW. I'm like, they had a fight where they were slamming people in the video game cabinets next week, and then an alien popped out of a claw machine, and people are like, that's awesome, but AEW does not attempt to market that way. They go, oh, so those fans oh, aren't coming just... in, but they could get casuals. I get casuals for them all the time. I think it's about that time, folks, don't you? We start talking about who's shown the brightest in all of wrestling this week, and we do that with a segment called Who Wins Wrestling? Who wins wrestling? Blah, 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 blah. Uh, who's got one? Who, uh, who wants to go first? Who wants to throw somebody over? Um, I, I, I'm, I'm torn. I'm pretty torn. Um, yeah. I'm going to say one, and, I'll, and if you guys don't say what the other one, we, one, other one is, then I'll say what that one was. All right, but I'm gonna say Chris Jericho, honestly, because of him being on Peacock and being on uh, on Stone Cold's Broken Skull Sessions, and then and then having a singles match uh, with Dax Dax Hardwood Hart Hardwood is that how they're saying it? Hardwood Scott Scott Dawkins. They need had a match with Scott Dawkins <laughs> on on uh, on Dynamite. That was really good. The, yeah. the thing that I just don't like about it, it was just that there was too many like run-ins and schmazzy poop. That was in it. I just didn't. Schmazzy I don't like. I didn't like all the schmazzy poop. But other <laughs> than that, I it was a really good match, and it made me go like, Jericho's a main eventer. Even though that wasn't even that wasn't even the main event of the show. That was like the 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 second match on the show, and right. it like stole it. So, Chris Jericho wins wrestling for me. Awesome, Mark. How about you, man? I'm going to steal it from you. I'm going Kushida to finally see him win a belt. Nice. Even though he wasn't wearing his jeans and it was like creepy seeing him in tights, uh, <laughs> I thought he had a solid match. Uh, uh, Del Fantasma is a hell of a wrestler himself. 
uh, a couple of su hammerlock suplexes off the top rope and all with some sick moves. It's, it's just a – I just wish he won a takeover. It, may, it, it would have made it make more sense. That he, he would have had more win. eyes on it as well. Yeah. yeah. But uh, good for Kushida. I don't know if he's going to get relegated to 205 Live. I hope not. I hope he's like Del Fantasma where he gets to like be profiled on the main show. Are you talking about Santos Escobar? Escobar, yeah. Okay. We call him his old name. Uh, well, that's the name of the his like tag well, his not, faction. I'm sorry, Del Fantasma. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Hannah, how about you? Do you have uh, somebody for who wins wrestling this week? Uh, yeah. So if we uh, if we can count this week as happening in a few days, because that is this week, uh, mm -hmm. and the young, because we're about to make a, a trap house Pittsburgh show trend nationally again via Twitch, and I'm pretty excited yeah. about it. Great That's very cool. So mm -hmm. envy. Totally do that. Yeah, envy. Holly, Holly, M King. <laughs> <laughs> Um, if I if I was gonna pick one, I'd have, I'd have to go with Cesaro because it looks like they're yeah. starting to pull. Oh yeah, that's a good pick. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, for SmackDown mm -hmm. this past week, uh, you know they, they might be continuing with the Rollins. It's with about Rollins goddamn time. Feud. Yeah, yeah, I know. But to see Cesaro win the main event is is Dope. really really cool. Got his WrestleMania win. Had a great match with Jimmy Uso or with Jay Uso rather. Uh, and might be going for the championship sometime pretty soon. Maybe even as soon as Backlash. It might be uh, a triple threat or something with uh, him and Seth Rollins going against Roman Reigns, uh, which would be awesome. So we'll see what happens. It's a good uh, pick. Yeah, I think so. I, I, it's, and like Hannah said, it's it's about damn time because mm -hmm. it's been mm -hmm. way too freaking long that they've held on to Cesaro. Yeah. At least he didn't was... get fired. At least he didn't get <laughs> yeah, fired. Yeah, thank God. <laughs> Man yeah. through. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Woo! Uh, Hannah, if um, what's that? There's always this week. There's oh yeah, <laughs> you never know. If they might they might go a two week thing like they did with WrestleMania two nights. They might just have they they're, they're going to extend Black the Wednesday wave. into next week. You could threaten the to try wave. to unionize. There's, there's a there's a, there's a there's a new strain of firings going around. <laughs> Get your vaccination. Now. Yep. Yeah. Vaccinations. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> uh, Hannah. If people want to, uh, if people listening want to get in touch with you, or if they want to see more of you, where do they? Where do they go? Uh, go to Instagram or Twitter uh, at hark underscore it's Hannah. Uh, BrooklynBattleComedy.com. Uh, we're gonna we we're gonna have the trailer and the Indiegogo for the post production costs going up pretty soon. So we're super excited about that. It's gonna drop on IWTV in June. Um, and I'm also on WrestleSplania. There are five people posting that account. Um, and I'll have one of those so You never know. <laughs> <laughs> Take I I post all the funny shit. So <laughs> if it's funny, it was you. If it's you, funny, I posted it. That's, that's the funny thing to say, right? I should take, be on the stage. Hey, <laughs> take off. <laughs> <laughs> take away the credit of all the other folks. Yeah, yes. No one else is funny. You don't deserve it. No. <laughs> Corey, what do you got, man? What do you got to plug this week? Oh, real quick! I just wanted to mention the other the other pick that I had for who wins wrestling was oh, sure. uh, Pat McAfee because he did such a great job as a commentator now uh, on SmackDown. I mm -hmm. think, dude, he's built for this. Yeah, it's, it's so that was what I was going to say. If you guys didn't say it, so just wanted to acknowledge that that I thought Pat McAfee did a great job. And yeah, uh, I meant to bring that up. That, that's a good pick. Also, you know, check out my podcast, uh, Evolving with Corey Castle. No. Uh, um, <laughs> no, available we're not gonna available on YouTube, no. youtube.com slash Corey Castle. Uh, follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Corey Castle. And uh, check me out on Twitter, on TikTok. The TikTok. Uh, Mark, do you have anything uh, to plug this week? I'm not sure. Like, I helped a couple guys start a new show last week, and it didn't go well. They want to redo it again today and start their show. Someone got a little too drunky and was on Adderall at the same time. So, well, you got to stop helping people. That's the key. Stop helping yeah. people. <laughs> so you find I, that light that makes you generous in your heart. You just ignore it. I, 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 <laughs> I tried to steer the ship. I tried to steer the ship, and it went right into a rock. So we'll see. We'll see how it goes this week. If they even show up, nobody's texting me and telling me if they're coming. 
Because I think the one guy, once he listened back to his own voice, screaming while he's on Adderall in hundred proof, in hundred proof Captain Morgan, he was kind of humiliated. So, so, so you're not you're not plugging them. You're just telling no. us the story. This might be a future plug if, if, if it's any good in the future. That's if I can plug. wrangle these bag of cats, like yeah, I can. I'll let you know. <laughs> these y- junkyard cats. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Full circle. Uh, yeah, full circle comes all comes back around. Always comes all back comes around. Say. All roads lead to junkyard cat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you like this show, you can find out. You can find more of them uh, on my YouTube channel. It's tinyurlcom slash YouTube Rick Connor. That's C O N N O R. Uh, you can see every episode we've ever recorded, uh, and you can find more all of our audio podcasts on our website rasslerock dot com. Uh, also, check out our Teespring shop. It's uh, Ooh, I haven't done this in a while. What is our Teespring shop? Teespring.com slash stores slash rassle dash rock. Uh, <laughs> check out all that. All, everything on there. Uh, 100% of all those proceeds go uh, to charity and are all donated to charity. So it's very, very cool. Yes, Corey. And all the links to all that stuff is all on rasslerock.com. Yes. Also, very importantly, if you're liking what we're doing, if you enjoy our content, please let us know you exist. Leave a comment below on the YouTube video. On maybe rate and rate and review on Apple or Spotify, however you want to do it. Let us know you exist. Mm-hmm. And you can always reach out to us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Russell underscore Rock. So if you want to talk to one of us personally, we can definitely reach out to you. If it, and if you can find me, you can find me right here, Rick underscore Matters on Twitter. I have twelve followers. I'm We're not growing. Talking. We're growing. If if anybody tweets anything funny from the Russell Rock account, it was me. <laughs> <laughs> Then it wasn't funny. <laughs> it wasn't funny the first time. I just ripped it until it became funny via my self-awareness. But now I permanently killed it by explaining it too much. Podcast. Wrestle Splania. Wrestle Splania. It's going to be Wrestle Splania. I'm going to Wrestle Splania. Brainy. I'm tired. I just did squat. <laughs> <laughs> like days a bitch <laughs> <laughs> alright that'll about do it for this episode of Rassle Rock Hannah thank you very much for Thanks, joining Anna. us you're welcome back thank anytime. you so like much for having me yeah. awesome totally got it. that's a lot alright <laughs> <laughs> and that'll about do it for this episode of Rassle Rock I'm Rick Connor Mark Hobacher Corey Castle and let's take it out like we always do with Mr. Nick Burke. It's so hard to say goodbye to yesterday. Join us again for another episode of Rassle Rock. This has been Jay Davis speaking. <laughs>